I didn't hear action, so I, I couldn't. Yeah. I wasn't I even was acting. <laughs> And he loved it for some reason. He loved it, I think, more than we did. <laughs> he was really into it. And, you know, we were leaving town, and he came to us and was like, let's have, let's have lunch. The first time I'd ever seen John Colm was in The Day After, the movie about the nuclear holocaust in the 80s and from Northern Exposure. The one real star that is someone who had a pretty serious acting career on set. His one thing is he wanted his son to be in it, and he saw this as a vehicle to sort of work with his son, J.D. Cullum. But I think J.D. was shouldering a major responsibility to taking the lead in a major film, a motion picture, you know, um, which he hadn't really done before. And that was a lot of responsibility. He was flying out. He wasn't in his natural habitat of California. Well, what are those guys doing? Don't let that lady run in. Are you filming, movie? We had the male, the two male leads locked, but we didn't have the female lead. Um, locked. J.D. Cullum had arrived and taken the part as Floyd, seen all the actresses, um, and so they, they were good, but um, he knew somebody better, and he contacted Jennifer Gotti in California. And J.D. was like, I'll pay for a plane ticket. I'll get her out here. Well, let's make this happen. He called her up, faxed her the script. She was here the next day. You know, it was like one, we basically, the day before we were supposed to start shooting. I think Jennifer read the script on the plane from L.A., I mean, she had no time to rehearse any of this stuff. She did a fantastic job with little or no rehearsal time. You're lying. <laughs> you don't get that from being honest. I'm sorry if anyone's offended by that, but you can't go to New York and be like, yeah, me and my buddy's just making this film on DV, and yeah, it's for no money. <laughs> these actors, they really look at these independent films as lottery tickets. It's a very low investment on their part. If this film, you know, becomes the next Blair Witch or the next you know, uh, Big Fat Greek Wedding, then they're golden. You know, they, they, they've got a million dollar ticket. And plus two, I mean, we had uh, John Cullum who liked it, and I think that he, quite honestly, I think he sold a couple people on it for us. And we held auditions, just put an ad in the newspaper, and it began from there. And that's where we met Mike Haley on an open casting call. A gentleman by the name of Mike Haley, he was one of the first people to just sort of randomly show up. It's just like, you know, it's a very innocuous guy who just like, you know, saw people were making film in the valley. He's like, oh, I'm interested in making film, you know. Come to find out this dude is, you know, uh, Mike Nichols, like right-hand man. He's been assistant director on several films from The Godfather to League of Their Own to... Angels in America, which was a two-part miniseries on HBO, won all sorts of Emmys, won him an Emmy. Uh, he come and done our little film, and why he was doing our little film, he was arranging for crew and equipment to be set up in London for the movie Closer. I just wanted to practice some acting. Now, you know, your lady ain't so little, Pee Wee. Oh, she's uh, eight months and uh, some weeks pregnant. Uh, I guess that's pretty obvious. <laughs> yeah, you know, you can make love right up until the water breaks.